Hi there, welcome to the RPS project. I'm Richard and today I'm going to have a look at the LM380. Now I have had a quick look at this uh, little IC previously, not too long ago, um, just a very basic circuit. But while I was looking at the data sheet for this, or one of the data sheets, I found uh, a nice little circuit that makes use of two of these LM380s um, working together with the output one output being for the um, where is it one of the outputs being for one side speaker and the other being for the other side speaker tell you what let me just grab the whiteboard Let's see if I can get this into shot there we go marvellous as you can see we've got two LM380s sitting in here um, and Basically, we sort of tied the inverting and non-inverting inputs to each other to get an output. Now, I'm not quite sure how this works, so I'm going to have a look at it on the breadboard and uh, get a scope on it and see what it's doing. I imagine what we're doing is we're taking the output and making it out of phase from each other on either side of the speaker. So one side will have a positive and the other side will have a negative. Um, what we'll get from this, I don't know, gain-wise, how much gain am I going to get? I, can't, I don't know, really. I mean, the um, a single one of these has got quite a good gain, you know, it's not bad. But how much gain am I going to get from this? Um, I've also got this across here, this uh, um, capacitor and resistor. How much is that going to affect or limit my um, my gain? I don't know. I mean, the speaker is 8 ohm speaker. And I've got about seven and a half. I use two 15 ohm resistors here in parallel, but I've got about seven to seven and a half ohms. So I've got around about the same resistance in parallel with it, but I have this capacitor here as well. So, well, uh, not quite sure. I suppose I'm just going to have to get it on the breadboard, get the scope on it, and have a look. But, you know, it looks like a, quite a nice circuit. It looks like it's going to be. Uh, Groovy, worked well, be uh, fairly simple and uh, effective. So, um, well, enough jabbering on by me. Let's uh, let's get it on the breadboard. Let's have a look at it. So here we go. We've got the um, the two LM380s here. One there, one there. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, well, it's just it's spaghetti junction. Um, it's the trouble I have. I tend to make it up like this, and you know, get lots of noise and rubbish on it but as long as I can see the basic function I suppose if I really wanted it to be nice and neat I could put it on a on a uh, on a PCB and um, strip board of some sort make it up get rid of all this rubbish and I'll probably get a much nicer output but hey for now we're just gonna have a look at it like this because I want to see if it works if this circuit works I've got uh, speaker there yeah, the breadboard um, function generator and of course the scope so I'm going to try and focus in on the scope as that's where the action is going to be you know one day I'll set this up properly beforehand <laughs> but where would the fun be with that eh? get it a bit more on shot that seems to be about it I can Oh, yeah. Right, okay, so now just as a recap, drawn it on here so we can see it. This is what I've uh, what I've done. And I'm gonna be having a look at several places. Um, if I can keep this steady enough. I'm gonna be starting off by having a look at the input uh, over here, and that'll be my channel 1 and channel 2 I'm going to have a look at where am I going to be looking at I think it's this side to start off with but I have got some points I want to measure so I'm going to also be looking at, uh, at these points where I've, I've got numbers 1 and 1 so I'm going to look at the signal on either side I'm also going to look at the signal here and here and then also on the non-inverting side so I'm going to move the scope around a bit and um, 
have a look around to see what sort of things I'm getting. Um, as I said, I don't really know what gain I'm going to get from this. Now, I have put this on 1 kilohertz, uh, 500 millivolts. So we'll see what sort of gain I'm going to get from that. Hopefully, something good. Well, let's turn the thing on and turn that on. I've got a 100 millivolts per division. I've got 500 millivolts input. It looks about right. So let's uh, crank the pot up and um, see what I'm getting. Oh, it's noisy. Well, I'm definitely getting something out of it. You can hear it. Um, not a lot of gain though, really. And this is the trouble. I wasn't sure how much gain I'm going to get from this amplifier. It's not a lot. But that's quite loud, really. Well, it seems loud to me. I expect it's probably drowning out everything else uh, um, from this little the speaker on the, uh, the microphone on the camera but um, but I do have good control of it there's lots of nice control it wasn't like when I did the single one that I had seemed to have a la lack of control over the uh, over the amplitude so it was really a bit glitchy needed refinement I think the word was needed refinement well this is quite refined right I quite like it um, but yeah, not a lot of gain. Uh, don't know, what else can I do? I was going to have a look at the um, probe and move these probes around. So, first probe set up, which I've got at the moment, is I've got a probe on the input. Um, let's move my red pokey marky stick. I've got uh, um, one on the input and I've got one here. But I'm going to put a probe, channels one and two, across the speaker. And have a look at the at what I'm getting there. So it's going to be fun moving these around. Let's actually turn turn it off a minute. So there. Um, excuse me. Right. Uh, can we get this in here? Ooh, that's there, and that's got to go on there. Well, I think I've got it connected up, so let's turn it back on. Ooh, mm, glitchy, nasty sounds from that. Um, input is on, but we're not seeing anything because I've turned up the the um, the volume or gain, as it were, whatever it might have volume, really, I suppose. As I crank this up, I should get two signals. Yeah, look at that. I get two and actually now that the probe is not on the input so I'm obviously it's obviously sensitive on the input to, to having anything across it mind you yeah that's quite noisy I might turn the frequency down I think I love it, 500 hertz. Uh, my hearing can deal with that a bit better than the one kilohertz. Um, it's just my hearing, a bit dodgy, but never mind. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, so what we're seeing is that on one side I'm getting the positive, and on the other side of the speaker, at the same time, I'll be getting the negative, which is which is fine, which is what you'd expect, isn't it? You know, you can't have posit two positives, they'll just cancel each other out. You think, hey, this will cancel each other out, but it doesn't because on on one side it's held positive, on the other side it's it's low, it's negative. So I get a it's the difference between the two that's obviously allowing it to um, to work. And as it crosses over, you know, it's going to cause that speaker to um, to vibrate. Yeah, that looks great. I like that. Um, let's turn that down and um, have a look at the next point that I want to look at. Turn the channel off, turn the voltage off. So where was I going to look next? Oh yeah, I was going to look at the input for this side, across this little um, capacitor here. This is a tiny little thing, it's a 47 picofarad I think. Um, it's a tiny little thing, so let's get the uh, probes across 
across there. Ah, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. How am I going to do that? Scratch me out a bit. Um, okay, channel. Channel one. I've got to get that round over here. Connect it to somewhere. Where am I going to connect it to? I'm like, yeah. There's not a lot of room in here. I'm actually going to connect it across that little peak fired capacitor because that's probably the easiest thing to connect to. If I can get it on without. There we go. Hopefully, I'll be able to see what that does. So let's turn the um, turn the thing on. Signal input, and um, actually, yeah, because you're looking at that, you're going, well, where are they? Um, well, I'm seeing the input. Across those two. So what I really need to do is to move the position of one of these or both of them, because you can see that they're both there, exactly the same signal. It's in phases. I'm only all all we've got across the um, that input really is the pot for amplitude and the um, and that little capacitor. But I suppose the gain that I'm getting is going to be the difference between those two. It doesn't look like there's much happening. Let me see if I can get it scope a bit better on this. Um, let's go up and I'll just adjust this back up slightly. So they're just next to each other. So now you can see those two, but if I turn the signal up, channel channel one adjusts slightly. It's only a tiny bit of an adjustment, but I suppose if this is working like an op amp does, then the difference between the two inputs, inverting and non-inverting inputs, means that um, differential amplifier will give me my gain, which we can see isn't really a great deal. So um, let's have a look at the next point I was going to look at, which is the two non-inverted inputs for each amplifier. So um, yeah, let's have a quick look at that. So turn off the signal, turn off the uh, amplifier, let's get, get uh, channel Channel 2 back onto 0, there we go. And now that's on pin 2. And I've got to get this one onto pin 2 over here. Um, I don't know, I'm going to need another little connector wire. Always need more connecting wires. I'm gone. Shove that in there. Connect onto that. Right, so now I'm looking at pin two of both the op amps, the non inverting input for both of them. So turn the amplifier on, turn the input on, and uh, yeah. As I expect, I'm getting exactly the same input on both of them, so there's no there's no change to those two because you'd expect them to be the same. But again, for this, we are as I change. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there is a slight change in the in channel one. Okay, you can see it's not an exact copy, exactly the same at the moment. Just move that down. They are exactly the same signal. But as I turn my pot up for the gain or amplitude whatever it is, there's a slight shift in the channel 
A from the single into the first one. So obviously, again, the you know, op amp basics, differential operational amplifier, the difference between the inverted and non-inverted, um, what gives me my gain. You know, it seems quite simple really, isn't it? Um, not a bad little device, I quite like it. Um, not a great deal of gain involved in this, but um, it does seem to do what I expect it to be doing. You know what I'm going to do is turn the signal off, turn that off, and connect again across the um, across the two outputs. So I think that seemed to show best what this amplifier is actually doing. It's actually looking at the um, difference is you know the fact that you've got a inverted out of phase signal across that speaker which is what makes it work so um like so that that's what it's doing that's why it works okay it's not quite refined you need to balance out all the capacitors and the resistors and anything you can use so that it's uh, you get a proper equal properly matched uh, um, uh, signal on both sides of the speaker but you know yeah it works it does what I want makes a noise and actually it's quite loud really I think that's that's decent size for a small speaker or maybe I don't know headphones don't know perhaps I'd have to do some playing around I think that I'm going to have to do some playing around with the circuit, mainly uh, these things here to see how this part reacts, change the pot maybe, put a different pot in there and have a fiddle around with it and um, see if I can make it a little more refined. So there you have it, the LM380 and the 8-pin um, package, it works great to Two of them, I don't know, back to back, call it. I don't know what you call that circuit. Um, I'm sure it does say something about it on the uh, on the data sheet. Um, haven't got that with me. Forgot to print it off, but never mind. <coughs> Managed to get it working on the uh, on the breadboard there. And even though I didn't get a great deal of gain from it, it did work. I got a signal out of it and enough to <coughs> drive this um, this little speaker here. Um, work nicely okay I could try put some music through it but um, yeah you know copyright rules and whatnot so um, just got the function generated through it works quite well I quite like the device it's a nice little device you know it's um it's simplistic it's got a certain amount of simplicity to it and it does the job I will probably have to spend some time fiddling with it changing some of those values um, and those components see if I can get it to be a bit more refined um, it does seem to be the thing with the uh, LM380 you probably need to spend some time to get it a bit more refined so I get a nicer output but yeah <clears throat> does what I want it to and I like it brilliant great what more can I say about it anyway if you didn't like this video you know what to do if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe and all comments are welcome see you next time